Hi everyone, so I'm back again with another video for you. Uh, this time I'm going to do a Eucharist Lily. And I just realised I've turned my phone off and I've got a picture on there for you of the actual flower. So I'll just get myself back into my phone. Um, the other name for it is the Amazon Lily. Uh, it looks a bit like a daffodil, but uh, it belongs to a different family. Obviously it belongs to the Lily family. And uh, it's just sort of like a, a white flower. And the reason why it's called the Eucharist Lily is because of the crown on top, which represents the uh, uh, crown of thorns on uh, Christ's head. So if you just bear with me a second, I'll just get my picture up and I will then show you what it looks like. Now that's, hold on, get it the right way around. That's a side view. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Might be a little bit blurry on there, uh, but I've got another picture of it which is of the uh, center of the of the flower uh, to give you an idea of what the flower is going to look like so uh, I'll just get rid of that and then we can start on uh, making the the flower so I'll just turn you down to my board Right, so the cutters that I'm going to use are these. Now, if you haven't got these cutters, you can you could pro make a, a template for yourself uh, with these. I'm probably going to do a, a video at some point in the uh, near future using uh, templates because a lot of people don't, may not necessarily want to spend money on the uh, on the cutters or for whatever reason, and uh, or they can't afford to by the cutters because it's a very expensive hobby is uh, flower making so uh, that's something that you've got to be aware of when you're uh, actually doing it and I'm just looking because I'm I've lost a bit uh, a veiner on here somewhere I should have a rose veiner and find what I've done with it ah no that's not it I'm doing my usual trick of not being prepared again having something missing from the tools that I need for this particular job. Anyway, we'll get on with doing the um, the petals. If uh, sorry, I didn't use a rose leaf uh, veiner. I used um, this veiner, which is a hellebore veiner. Just get those out of the way. That's for something else. Right. So we're only going to be using white paste for this. I'm not going to do any leaves for this particular flower for the simple reason that the uh, leaves on the Eucharist Lily, uh, unlike your normal uh, bog sanded uh, uh, lilies, they are more like um, a lily of the valley leaf, which is very broad leaf, they're quite big and quite wide. So uh, in a flower arrangement for a cake or anything like that, you wouldn't use the leaves in there. If you were going to do an arrangement say for a competition or something like that then you would put the um, the leaves in but there's not a lot of veining on them it's just a sort of a big wide very glossy type green leaf I've just got I've got some color on there that from some that I did earlier these are some of the um, lilies that I've already made up this is one here that I've already put together so if that give you an idea of what it's going to look like so I'll just pop that to one side and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off by making the crown first. Now, I'm using 26 gauge wires for everything. That includes the centre. Uh, apart from the um, uh, column in the centre of it. Like other lilies, it has got a, a pistol in the centre. But... Uh, I'm just going to get that towel, that's a little bit thinner wire. As usual, I'm only going to do one of each just to uh, uh, show you what they look like. 
Now if there aren't any stamens as such because the stamens are actually on the edge of the uh, the crown. If I take, get that flower again and show you, if you look on the edge here, that's where your stamens are, which are part of the trumpet part of the flower. So I'll just put that back in there till we come back to it. So what I'm going to do for the centre of the flower, I'm going to, going to cut the wiring to three. So you want a third of the wire for the trumpet part of the flower. I'll just put two of those up there. Put that to one side, that's for my petals. Now, in order to make the trumpet part of the flower, what we're going to do is we're going to do a Mexican hat. For the back of it. Start off with a ball of paste. And then, if you roll it between your two first fingers. To bring it up a little bit at the back there, like that. And then get between your finger and your thumb on each hand and just go around it. And squeeze the base of that out. That out. And the reason why it's called a Mexican hat is because it looks a bit like a Mexican hat. Just in case you're wondering for anybody who's not done flowers before. Then onto my board, and then you want a cell pin or a small rolling pin like this. If you're not in the UK, we have a firm called um, uh, Cell Crafts who make these. Um, small rolling pins you can buy them in sets the I buy the smallest sets but I buy them in a set it's got this one in and then it's got another one which is a bit about the size of a cocktail stick if you buy them separately it's more expensive so if you buy the sets you can get hold of them but there are other people that have copied them now unfortunately there's a lot of people copying tools that other firms have designed just beware of co cheap copies though because cheap copies are not worth buying because they tend to break they're not very well made and it's what they call false economy buying something that's cheap right so we've, once you've done that if you try your crown part of your cutter over the center of that and then cut that out like that take the excess paste away doesn't matter if it's not too even just at this point because we're going to hollow that out in the centre so I'll just get rid of that paste there get that off my board and turn that over so what you're going to do now is use the rounded end of your cell pin and push it down into the centre like that and then push it against your finger just go around like that just to bring that up so it starts to come upright try and get it as far upright as you can now you don't want too much at the bottom on this because we're going to add another piece onto the back but that has to be after you've put your petals on so we just take that out so you've got the centre of your flower there like that now what I do with the these pieces here, because they're a bit too big, I pinch them together like this. Or what you can do first of all is if you get your cell pin and roll them out and make them a little bit longer. So if you get each one like that, turn it over very gently with the end of your cell pin, roll it out, just give it a couple of rolls. Doesn't want to be too big. Because these are going to form your stamen. Your stamens for around the uh, outer edge of the corona, it's called, is this part of the flower. Right, so once you've got that, then pinch it in like that. Now, some people use bits of uh, stamen cottons and all sorts on on these I've studied the flower on various different websites and different angles and things like that and to me this is the way it looks to me so I'm doing my own version and not anybody else's version although I'm using the same cutters that they've used 
everybody's got their own idea because I found when I was learning that um, if you get a number of people in the class that have done things differently I found this when I was in class because I was always said well if I've got a different way of doing it the tutor would show us her way and then um, then I showed her my way and then people then decided which way they wanted to go which was easier for them so I'm just going to bring that back out again in the centre there because I've squashed that a little bit with hanging on to it might be a good idea to put a bit of white fat on your um, cell stick just so it doesn't stick in there so I'm just going to pop that down there and I'm going to get the wire that we've got there and I'm going to put a tiny hook on the end of it like that I don't know whether you can see that I'll put it against my hand okay then get your centre pop that down into the centre you should have a little bit of thickness in the bottom just to anchor the hook into like that and just squeeze it round a little bit underneath there just so that holds that in place and keeps that upright we also need a little bit of thicker paste at the bottom as well to put the pistol in now you could there's two ways you could do this you could either do it with just a I'm just going to lay that down so that doesn't level over right and what two ways you can do it you can either use a, a piece of thin wire either a 30 or a 32 gauge white wire white because we're using white paste and if you use a green wire it'll show through so I only want a very small piece of this just get my rid of my wires out of the way it's a little bit awkward when you're doing these uh, videos and you're on your own you don't have a camera person as I've said before I just want a very short piece of wire probably about an inch and a half something like that if that where's that gone that's disappeared we'll do that again I should have kept hold of it shouldn't I don't cut your fingers though when you're doing it <laughs> Just be very careful just pop that down get rid of that wire out of the way now you can either just cover this with some white tape or you can do like I did because there is a very tiny anther cap on the top so what I've done is I've got a very small piece of paste tiny ball of paste roll it into a bit of a sausage and then put your wire in if depending on which paste you're using if your base paste is quite sticky like the one I'm using you don't need any glue on it but if you're not sure and you find that things are coming off put some glue on your wire first bring that down your wire like that and then just start rolling it now if you get it too long you can take some off but want it to come up past the wire so if you keep rolling it will come up past the end of the wire and it wants to be quite thin practically as thin as the wire like that then when your paste has come past the end of your wire then if you just get your finger and thumb underneath it and then just push that piece down at the top and that forms the anther cap and then just roll it underneath just to make sure you've got that little flat piece on top we're not going to put any detail into that because it's too small to be able to do that and then I'm just going to give a bit of bend on the wire and then just shape your your paste again like that and then very gently holding that don't drop it like I nearly did then if you get your centre of your trumpet and then that piece of wire that's left on the bottom goes into the paste at the bottom like that so there you've got your, your centre done like that right so I'll put that to one side I've already got a dry one for later on so the next thing is the um, the petals now the side petals are like this I've got one here just put it against my hand so you can see it I've already dusted uh, some of these with the white dust so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a couple of those and show you how I made the um, petals now you need six of these so start off by rolling some paste out don't forget to put some white fat on your board mine's quite still quite sticky so I haven't put any more on you don't need to put loads on and then I'm using my trusty rolling pin if you haven't got one of these 
if you can get one get older one because they're brilliant if you've got a lot to do and you get a very fine fine ridge around the center so you don't get the bulk in the center of your petals when you're doing things like this and then cut out your petals so make sure that ridge is up the center of the petal if you haven't got one of these rolling pins then you, you want uh, this is a cell board is this from the same firm as the uh, roll um, rolling pins that I told you about uh, but there are other people Nicholas Lodge has got his own range his pins which he used to work with uh, Margaret so uh, he's brought his own range of those out of all her ideas right so what I want then is I want some more wires now with uh, with this because they're only quite small of these I'm going to cut this into four so you don't need long wires for these by the time you fa tape your petals onto the back of your flower you've got a thicker scent this is why we're not using thick wires right so on your finger first finger pop your thumb on top so you can feel what's happening then into the end of the paste and twist it the reason for that is because the wires are covered with uh, stem text already and get your wire to go I've gone up to about there and the reason I've only gone to there is because I want the end of the petal to curve back when I've uh, when I when I've finished with this so we'll do the other one make sure you've got a clean cut so you want a pair of sh very sharp scissors or wire cutters whatever it is you're using to do your flowers because if you've got a hook on the end of it uh, an un you'll find that it will tear your paste so you need a nice clean cut so that it doesn't damage your paste when you're uh, putting your wire into your paste so I'm just going to put these onto my ball tool pad let's get those wires out of the way and then with your ball tool or dog bone tool whichever you're using I usually do it on the back thin the edges now you can go over it quite a bit and get it quite wavy because they're not you don't want your petals to be too straight right so that's the thin the edges thinned and then into your vena so I always put the where the ridge is on your paste that's that, that side that goes into the back of the vein this is the back of the vein so that's going to be the back of the petal so pop that down down into your vein and then put the top on top give it a good press it's not very heavy then it's only very fine is this take that out like that and then shape the bottom of your petal and then curve back your petal like that you can give it a bit more shape if you want it's how it's your petal it's how you do it and then onto your bobble form so that the base of the petal is between the two humps and keeps it shaped you need them to be like that so that when you come to tape them together they go around the center a lot easier because you've already shaped it if you don't do that and it's flat you'll find that your flowers you'll end up with your uh, petals coming too far down your your wire so again into your vena and I mean if you're really clever while they're still soft you can tape it all together if you know what you're doing so that just be careful about petals coming off so again curve it up at the bottom then curve it back a bit at the end and then into your foam like that okay right so we'll just get rid of those out of the way as I say just to show you again these are the cutters that I've used so these are your, your uh, sepals and this is for your centre your crown or corona or whatever you like to call it in the centre right so the next step now is colouring and before I've done that I didn't show you how to make a bud so we'll do that as well 
So again, we can use one of those uh, wires that I've just used there, one of my 26 gauge wires. Now I don't want to go too big with these. They are quite big buds, but I always find that when you're making flowers, even though they may be quite big in nature, if you make them too big in sugar, they can look a bit clumsy. So I've just got some, spilt some powder on my board, so we'll just get rid of that. If you spill powder on your board and you can't get it off, just rub some white fat into it and then uh, do it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a ball of paste like that. It's probably about the size of a Malteser. And I'm going to roll that into a cone at the top to form the actual bud part. Then if you go to the lower part, probably about halfway down it and then start rolling it again and thinning down the back. Now before I get too far, I'm going to put the wire in. I'm not put, putting a hook on this so if you have problems with your paste coming off your wires put some glue on your wire first as i say this paste i'm using is very sticky so they tend to stay on the wire and then start working it down your wire and what i'm doing here is if you've ever done stephanotis they've got like a little rounded piece at the bottom of the um at the bottom of the back of the flower so what I'm doing here is I'm leaving this thick piece at the bottom here and I'm just rolling just above it. So I'm rolling between the bod. Push that wire in a little bit further. That's better. And just rolling it down like that. It's got quite a long neck on it as this uh, bud and the flower. So I've left that little piece, thick piece at the bottom. That's where the seeds would be in uh, in these i don't know whether these have seeds they actually grow from bulbs but i mean some of them like tulips and that i found some tulips this year that i actually uh, managed to get the seed pods off and uh, i will grow some bulbs from those so i'm assuming that uh, the growers that's how they do it right so once you've done that what you need to do then is to get a curve on the top of that because they all curve out from the center so we've got a little curve out on that so the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my um, cutting wheel and I'm going to divide this bud into three. So if you lay the bud against your fingers like that, so up and down like that to get one in, turn it round, another one, and then try and get it halfway between those two, which is about there, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very finely score into the bud all the way around like that with the cutting wheel it's not going to be that obvious but it just adds to the the veining of the uh, buds that you're doing because unlike some buds these don't have a green sheath around them just reshape your neck again so then we've got your bud with the little uh, bulbous piece at the bottom there so we'll put that to one side to dry Right, so, when you've got all your pieces dry, I'm just going to get my, um, oops, paper on here that's got all the colours on it that I've used. So, we'll start off with the uh, Corona, this, one, this is a dry one. So I'm using two colours on this, I'm using a lime green. Uh, this one that I'm using here is from Edible Art, which is called Tropical Lime. They do a lime and a tropical lime. The lime is a bit darker than that. And I'm also using um, Ruscus, which is a sort of a midish green. You could use something light if you want it, but if it's too light, it doesn't show up. So what I'm using here is I'm using sable brushes for this. So I've used two brushes when I find out which ones I've used there's that one where's the other one that must be the other green and what's that one making sure I use the right brushes for the right colors 
that's a lime green right so I've got some lime green on here and what I'm going to do is where your little points are on the flower you need to start from the bottom and just brush up I'm using a number two brush for this because that can be quite wide and then again down to the bottom then brush up to where the stamen is like that some flowers probably have a bit more than this but I find that if you're doing it in sugar and you do too much on it you can spoil the whole effect You can go a little wide on this for this colour because this is your background colour. We don't put any green on the um, pistol in the centre, just on the outside of the corona or crown. Right, so I should have a finer brush. I'll just see if I can find a finer one. I, don't, I thought I had a finer one than that unless I put it somewhere else uh, can't see it right so I'll use that one just be careful with this this is the darker green and what you do is with that is you just come up up the center like that just very finely There we are. That's your centre. You could put a bit more light green at the sides if you want. If you haven't got enough, just add a little bit more. I'm just going to... Oh, that's a brown one. Didn't want that one. That's the green one. If you want to put a little bit more green on either side of them, just to show that up. right so that's that i'm just going to turn the camera up a little bit more this way so you can see what i'm doing a bit better i keep going out of shot i keep i don't watch the screen when i'm doing these things uh you know and it gets a bit tricky when you're your own cameraman that's a green one that must be the brown one then yep that's the brown one so what i've got here is i've used some uh nut brown which is uh this one from edible art and what I've done is I've mixed some yellow in with it. I've used some um, sunflower in with it to make it a lighter colour. And what I'm going to do with this is very carefully just catch the tips with these. This is the pollen, the brown pollen, which you would normally see in the centre of a, a most normal, most lilies. But on this one, it's right on the very edge. These are very delicate, so just let the bristles do the work. It only wants to be very fine. You don't want a lot on, because we don't want it to sand out like a sore thumb. There we are, if you can see that. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Uh, and then with the petals, I'm going to brush these with white. I've got some colour come down there, so I have to be careful here. Have a white brush, there we are. Now the colour I'm using on here for the white is... Um, where's it gone? There it is. Uh, this one is called Silver Snow from Edible Art. Any white luster will do. Something, if I put it on my hand, if you can see that, it's quite shiny, is that? So something like that sort of thing will do. 
so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dust all over the petals now there isn't any green on these normally I put bits of green at the bottom and that but I inspected the flowers quite closely and I couldn't see any green anywhere on the petals so I left it off but if you wanted to you could put a very fine tip of light green just right at the very base of the petals if you just want to add a little bit more definition but on the actual flowers I don't have that on them so the next step is now to assemble that together so I'm using uh, the light green tape this is uh, Nile green that I'm using then start it off at the back of your trumpet then pull that up right underneath your the base of your corona there and then what you need to do now is all of your petals bend your wires down like that so if you do this before you start then all you need to do then is just to uh, pick them up and tape them in so keep if you keep your finger underneath your petal like that so that your nail comes right to the edge of the uh, flower and then just bend it down like that that means it stops you from breaking your petals if you're just resting it on there so it's got something to hold it in place what we've got there one two three four five we want another one there it is again underneath bend it down so we've got all those ready so if you tape in your first three petals directly underneath the flower make sure your tapes nice and flat if you stretch it sometimes it curls over like that's just on there right bring that round put another one in I don't know whether you can see this but if you just look at the back here you can see where I've curved the petal up how it fits around the base of the corona it just matches that and if you've got it so close on that an experience will give you the ability to be able to do that then if you just get your wires and pull them in to make sure that they're tight you can adjust them once you've got all these three petals in and then put the third one in underneath And then tape round now what I would do in between here is to tape down the reason for that is once you get your petals in and you've adjusted them make sure that the well the wires are well and truly in they'll say where you want them to stay you won't have anything flopping around I used to get my students complaining that oh it's flopping around it won't stay but that's because they're not getting the tape in tight enough right so if you just get them evenly spaced around the corona like that and then start your tape off again underneath there I always find it better to start a little bit lower down like that tape it in and then push it up or come up like that if you get it in, at an angle until you get right up underneath your petals like that and then you can start putting in the next three now the next ones want to go in between the two that you just put in there like that and they fit nicely round the layer that we've just put underneath that one's moved so we'll just adjust that back to place if they move around don't worry about it because you can always adjust them afterwards and then the last one wants to go in where are we? There. Just pull your wires down, make sure that they're nice and tightly in. Another one there. That's it. And then you can tape all the way down.
Right, so there we are. Those are the six petals in. You can just them round to where they want to be. Okay. I'm just going to put that to one side now. And then I'm going to come back to the uh, the buds. This is a bit soft, is this, at the moment. But um, I'll come back to that in a minute. Because I'm going to do the back on that flower first. Because you need the back on like that but you can't do that until you've got your petals on so i'm going to have to do this soft i've already just done the uh, the ones before i started filming on the other one so we need a fairly small ball of paste remember this is only going to do with the back it's not going to be the front so just roll it into a bit of a sausage like that get your flour then that twist that into the center of that and bring that down bring it up to about half an inch off the top there and then start rolling between your finger and your thumb remembering to leave that slightly bulbous piece at the bottom there now they don't always come up even because that's gone a bit uh, wonky on one side don't worry about that just yet we can adjust that once we've got it in and what I would do is put a bit of glue at the top there. This is quite sticky. I might not need any glue on here. And I'm just going to brush that up so that that comes underneath the, underneath the petals and roll it in again. So that that comes up to meet the back of the petals like that. Then roll this down a little bit further here. Make that a little bit longer. So there we've got the bulbous piece at the bottom here and you've got the long tube piece that goes up to your petals like that. Just make sure it meets and just blend it in a little bit at the top there just to make sure that it looks as though it's all one. And then what you need to do then, like the buds, give it a curve over and then just reshape round like that to make sure that that's... You haven't squashed it too much. We don't want a flat tubular bit at the back. It wouldn't be a tube, would it? Right, so that's that bit done. So once that's done, then what you can do is go back to your uh, colours. And I'm going to use my normal green brush, which has got some dark green in it. And I'm going to go back to the lime. This helps to make it look a bit more natural because it's although I'm using the lime green to colour it, the darker green that's already on the brush, which I keep for all my petals and that, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a brush just around the base there, like that. And I've already done the same on the um, on the buds. I'd already coloured those before I came online. Let's get that one. And then just give that a bit of a dust around the base like that. They look so much better when you dust it on. Don't, you don't want to see any straight lines. It wants to be blurred. So it's blending in. So it's blending from green to white. Just be gentle with it. And build up your dust in. Don't have a lot of dust on your brush. Always get your dust on your brush. And then off your brush onto your paper. And then dust it on because bits of dust fly up and colour where you don't want it to colour. Like that. Now what I'm going to do here as well is I'm going to go back to the um, white that I've got. And I'm just going to put some white just down the tube there. To match in with the rest of the flower. Just bring it down to just where your green starts. And just lay that on there. And each of those I've already done the uh, the buds I've already dusted those put that on there now I don't know whether you noticed on the picture that I showed you but these tend to grow in clumps on the top of the long stem coming out of these wide leaves at the bottom so again i'm going to get my light green tape i'm going to start off by taping underneath 
this flower and I'm going to put buds in between these as well to bring those down let's pull that in like that. Now it doesn't matter if your buds aren't all the same size either because um, you're going to get them at different stages. Uh, I don't know whether any of you have got uh, amaryllis growing at the moment. I've got some growing downstairs. I'm thinking I'm going to do a video on that as well because it's quite an unusual colour. But getting back to these, um, you find that when the flowers are coming out, any buds that are left to come out can be at different stages. So... They don't, all, they don't all have to be exactly the same. And that adds to the realism of anything that you're doing with anything like that. I'm just going to bring those out a little bit further. Try not to touch the wet paste. That uh, I mean, you've probably got yours already dry when, you, when you're doing those. Because I've got to do a video. I've got to do them much quicker. And then tape down with all your flowers and your buds together like that. It's sad to have a little bit of a glance at my screen to make sure I was still in shot. <laughs> oh, I've had a bit of stick out of that ever since I started doing these videos for going out of shot with my uh, things. But there we are, we've got those all together. Now the last bit for this unlike a daffodil where you get the sheaths coming up on each of the flowers the sheaths on these come out um, separately out of the bunch so I'm just going to pop that bunch to one side and uh, I need to have a look and see if I've got some no I haven't got any green paste in there so I'm just going to get a bit of white paste out and if I can find my green colour there we are this colour I'm using here is Christmas green from uh, Sugar Flare I only want a tiny bit because I want to be quite quite pale to the uh, does this part so I might have to add some more white into this we'll just see how we go with this now it's a bit dark is that, I want that lighter I'm just going to add some more white paste into that bits of green paste left over always come in handy because uh, you're going to be always making leaves of some kind when you're doing your flowers so you can never have too much of it Whereas some other colours that you're using, sometimes um, you do get left over. It's a bit sticky is this paste. I'm just going to get some uh, white fat on my fingers to finish putting the colour in. When you're using strong colours, by the way, another tip for you. Um, it's a good idea to rub some white fat onto your hands because you'll find that... Uh, it's, it doesn't stain as much. I've got some more on my fingers, look, because I've just got all of the pot of colour there. Uh, it doesn't stain your fingers as much because the white fat acts as a barrier like a barrier cream but you can't use a barrier cream because these are edible things so if somebody ate it you don't want a normal barrier cream in it do you? so we use the white fat for that for that reason and that helps to stop the colour from staining your hands and it's a lot easier to wash off and I always find that the uh, hand gels for washing your hands are a lot bit better than soap for getting colour off if you do get colour on your hands. Um, for some reason it does tend to bring the colour off a lot better than soap does. So that's another tip for you. I'm full and mindful of information. Anybody wants to know anything, ask me. 
I haven't got round to it as well and I'm just going to mention this while uh, I'm getting rid of my colours out of the way. I am experimenting with different pastes for doing the flexible flowers because some flowers that I want to do like um, croissants and dahlias and things like that that tend to break off very easily. Now if you get some colour on your board like, you've just done, like I've just done there, I'll just show you this. bit of white fat on your hands, rub that into your board where your colour is. Piece of kitchen roll and just wipe it off. Like that. Works better than anything else. And I've got brown on my fingers there, I've picked it up somewhere so just wipe that off. So I've already got some white fat on my hands so I can get that off. Right, so now for these sheaths. Now I'm not going to use a cutter for this, I'm going to do this freehand. You could use a lily cutter for this, a small lily cutter if you've uh, got one to hand. Uh, I would probably use the wide one out of the lilies. But I'm just going to roll this off. We don't need any grooves or anything like that because this is going to stick directly onto the flower and it's going to wrap around and you want two of these you could make a template as well if you, if you once you get the right size if you make a template from it and cut it out with um either stick it onto a margarine container and cut it out and use the plastic then you can reuse it over and over again so it does come in handy for if you do make any templates for anything at any time what have we done with me cutting wheel should be here somewhere. Did I drop it on the floor? That wouldn't surprise me. Should have another one in here somewhere. Yep, got one there. I'll find it when I'm not looking for my usual trick with these sort of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm cut, going to cut out sort of a leaf shape like that. And I'm just going to bring it down a little bit there. So I'm just going to cut another one out. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly the same. Like that. Take your excess paste away. There we are. Now I'm just going to go into my workbox because I think I've got some uh, corn husk in there which I forgot to get out because all, although I've made all my bits and pieces for for this I couldn't do the outer part until I assembled a whole flower so first of all get that onto my ball tool pad And again, thin your edges. It just takes that cut edge off, and, as, and particularly with something like this as well, we don't want it to be too, too flat either. You want a bit of movement in it. Because some things, and I will do a video on it as well, I was going to do some um, variegated ivy at some point in time, which I will add in. Ivy in itself, when it's growing, is a very flat leaf. But if you do it flat in sugar, it looks dead, it doesn't look lifelike. So you have to sometimes to improvise with things to just get that bit more movement into it. So I'm just going to pop that onto the corn husk, get that straight like that. And then just go over it with your fingers like that to get the detail onto it. And I'm just going to do it on the other side as well. Like that. And do the same with the other one. Now when you're doing things like this, because this wants to be sort of upright, you could leave this to dry a little bit before you put it on, so that it stiffens up. There we are, that's that. Just pop that to one side. 
This comes comes in handy for a lot of things, does uh, corn husk. So when you're buying your sweet corn, try and get it with the husk on. Or if you buy it where somewhere where they've stripped it off, ask them if they've got any left over and uh, put it between some kitchen roll in a book and just leave it for a few days to dry out. And it's brilliant for um, veining anything that's got straight veins in it, unlike a leaf type veining. And it's cheap and it's free. I love it when things are free. I'm a Yorkshireman. We're very tight up here. Right, so you've got your flowers there like that. So what we need to do now is I'm just going to turn that over onto the other side that I've veined first. And I'm going to add a bit of glue. Where's my glue gone? There. Just lay it back down there again while I do this. Whoops, turned it over. And then if you just glue down that, probably about halfway down, turn that one over and do that on that side. Doesn't matter where you start with this because that's the as long as you get one on one side and one on the other side so bring that up underneath your flowers and wrap that round like that like I say it might be a good idea to let this dry a bit before you put it on bring that down and round what you can do is if you leave if you leave your flowers upside down like that and just um, what you can do if we can just do that safely and if you get a bit of uh, kitchen roll just to pack it out just tear a bit down like that. and just If you just pop that underneath your underneath your flowers and underneath that no, that's a bit too much is that we don't want it packing that much you've just got to fiddle about with it just to get it as you want it that might be a bit better let's try that one there we are like that and just turn that round and do the same thing on the other side there we are like that so then when you finish your flowers just ignore the kitchen roll uh, that's what they look like when they're finished and when that's dry that look very effective you can also curve it round a bit as well like that just to give it a bit of shape so I hope you've enjoyed this this video and you come back and see my uh, next videos uh, don't forget to subscribe at the bottom of the uh, underneath the video there and um, don't forget to leave any suggestions if there's anything you'd like to see me do then please leave that in the comments below and uh, give us a thumbs up uh, if you like the videos and uh, come back and see me next time so take care stay safe see you soon